today I want to celebrate our Mexican community. Today is their Independence Day. So we love you guys a lot. We're with you guys celebrating. Those of you that want to see the forum again, or if you want to share it with somebody in English and Spanish, you can find the forum and their episodes in our Facebook page or in YouTube. Everything that we've done is recorded and saved to share with you guys. Over 100 episodes. So we have them available for you guys. Remember, folks, we're here with you. We have been since the pandemic started. And you can keep counting on us through the phone. Phone number is the same, 414-672-8090. Or email soc at socmilwaukee.org. Or visit our page, our website, stockmilwaukee.org, where we are constantly updating all of the information about COVID-19 for you guys. We know that it's so important. Uh, it's changing daily. So we are trying to manage all that information for you guys. So visit our website too for lots of information and resources. Please folks, if you appreciate this forum that we're here with you guys, help us out and fill out the uh, survey. Just take a few minutes, maybe three minutes. We're just asking you guys if the information from today was helpful, if what we're doing is helpful. We just want to know if there's anything that we should change or anything that we need to modify, and we will take into consideration your suggestions. I'll just answer a few questions, and then we have the information. And we can take into consideration, you guys have seen changes um, to the forum based on your suggestions. And we also use that with our partners and the, the funding folks to let them know that we are listening to you guys and that we're taking your voice into consideration. If you guys are seeing me today without a mask because all of the personnel from SOC is still working virtually Porque, because in the zip code where we work, where our office is, 53215, where lots of us live, including me, and there's still a um, crisis of contamination with COVID. So we know that um, that's our district. So 53204 and 53215. So that's why we're all still working virtually. That's why you don't see us. We're doing our part. I'm home in my living room right now. But we got to keep doing this so that we can take care of everybody's health. When you guys participate and you're with us, we can see how many people are with us. Uh, but we can't see who is with us. So say hi to us. Uh, give us a little... Give us a little something. Let us know that you're with us. Is there somebody with us for the first time today that's never been with us? Give me a hello. Give me a hi. A quick hello. Remember, we are an organization. We can talk from about certain things, certain waters we can swim in, and others we can't. So the opinions and points of view that are shared today aren't necessarily socks. We want to share people's voice. Sometimes we can't um, agree with opinions or talk about certain things, but this forum is for you guys to share your voice. It's a safe place. And this is a place where you can have a voice. So today, you know that we started talking about Hispanic Heritage Month. We are very proud, all of us, 
about everything that's happening with the movement, but we also remember that we've never stopped with the, the movement. We are all still fighting. And so we want to put some emphasis to our Latina community, uh, more than 70% of our community. So today we're going to bring on some special guests tomorrow. We're going to have Jeanette, Dr. Jeanette Kowalik, who is the commissioner, I think it, that's how you say it, the public health commissioner for here in Milwaukee. And I think you guys have heard she's going to Washington, D.C. Unfortunately for us, because we really do appreciate her, but her collaboration in the forum has been great. Uh, we're going to miss her a lot, but thank goodness, Marlene, our COVID coordinator, I'm sure she'll be able to get her at least one more day with us so we can tell her thank you. Don't miss it. It's going to be the last time you see her here on the forum. And of course, we're still going to be still communicating with everybody. All right. Like I said before, I am super happy to have our guests today. They're going to help us out officially to take off on our Hispanic Heritage Month. So we're going to start with an organization, very important for us, which is the Roberto Hernandez Center at UWM. Here we have the director, Alberto Maldonado. Let's say hello to Alberto. Hello, Alberto. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. And thank you, Tammy, for the invitation. Of course. If it's not like this, we're not going to see each other, right? I know we've been at different video conferences just to be able to see each other's faces at least. So, Alberto, it's a month full of pride, but also suffering. We're also suffering, and we know that there's always a fight for everything that's happening, especially the news about things that are still happening where we have the immigrants that are being held, where they're just treating them terribly and we're hearing things. But the, the worst is, is still happening. People dying. The kids are still separated from their parents. And now there's information that they're sterilizing our people without their permission or just without they even them even knowing it is being reported. So we can't forget about these things, folks. Even though we do need to celebrate, um, you know, locally, all the victories that we've had and the pride that we have. So thank you for being with us, Alberto. Remind us or tell the people that are with us for the first time, what's your role at the center? Well, my role at the center from 2016 has been obviously bringing leadership, um, all of the operations, and then directing the center and the mission of the center to keep the mission alive the most that I can, uh, supporting my personnel, making sure that they have all the the tools and the resources necessary to do their job and to have a positive environment, a, a, a progressive environment, an inclusive environment where students, where students, staff, faculty, the community can come. Very important to the community that everybody feels good about our services. Um, they feel good about coming to visit us. And of course, promoting an agenda where students, Latino students feel supported, where I can serve and be a voice for the students. And so that the staff from the center helps 
and all the aspects that the students might need academically, social life, uh, in a holistic manner. That way we can take care of all of the needs of our students. But more, very important, my role directing the center is also following the vision of growth, a vision where the students feel supported and that they're not alone. We're just helping them to make sure that they can stay here at the university and we help to find funds and resources necessary to keep them moving forward. And that's the mission from 50 years ago when we're trying to keep it alive. How was the center constructed? What was the vision that they had? Our, our mentors and our, our I don't want to see our, our, our people from before because they're still alive, right, right, right. Just the people in the community and the students from years ago, they had that vision. And my role as a director is to keep up with the mission and maintain that alive. Alberto, how many Latino students are at the university today? In bachelor's or like the four-year degree? I think we have, well, last fall in 2019, we had 2,340 students uh, that could say, consider themselves Latinos. And we're hoping that that number keeps growing. And that's, that's the goal. And part of my role and part of my colleagues, Patricia, Patricia, sorry, and the different members of the faculty, um, well, just my whole team, is to keep growing that number in an intentional way. It's part of our community. Let's ask people that are with us, how many of you guys have been to UWM? Just put a little comment. I know my bachelor's degree and my doctorate students, well, you guys have heard me complaining to the whole world about that. Currently, the university kicked me out because my time ran out and Alberto's helping me with that to be able to get back. Uh, there's a little bit of work that I got to do yet. So we hope that's going to happen. But if any of you have been students at UWM or, or maybe have kids, put a comment. Uh, let us know that you're part of that family. Specifically, we're going to share with the people that are with us, what are the programs and the services, just real quickly, that the, the center offers. We have, well, our mission, it has three parts, essential parts. Like I said before, that same vision that they had for people 50 years ago, supporting our students academically, right? That's our first mission in a way, a holistic way serving our people so that they can be the best that they can be. The second is the connection with the community. It was fun. This was started with this mission. So we want to keep the community feeling supported that they have the resources and the information and access to the university. It's so important. Uh, that's the work that we do with Fiesta Mexicana, uh, the work that we do with uh, the Puerto Rican festivals, with different public schools here in MPS, with different Catholic schools that we have, other charter schools, so different districts that we worked with. But more than anything, the intention 
is to offer these bilingual resources. It's very important to stress that. All of us here at the center are bilingual. Uh, we're bicultural. Very important for our community that they feel supported for that part of our mission so that they know that there's a collaboration with different nonprofit identities like SOC. We worked together previously and other organizations in the community. So that bridge between our center and the community is so important. And then the third part of our mission is support and motivate people to have them exploring their community and their uh, Latino culture, supporting them as they explore it. It's essential, really is. If they're trying to, you know, investigate what they want to study, if they want to learn more about their community, that's so important. We gotta, we gotta grow. Uh, like like what a lot of people in English call the research. We got to grow. We have to keep learning about our community. A lot of time that doesn't happen. Um, a lot of time we don't learn about our own our own culture. We we know a lot about the culture of this country, and it's important for our students to learn and to investigate and to ask questions, right? Everything that they want to know about, just ask. All right, let's find out Reina Morales. She says that her son is there for his first year. The just being at a university for a kid, but then, you know, also being a minority, being of color, of color. So congratulations, Reina. Um, we hope that he has a great experience and that he keeps moving forward. Marisol has a question. Are there scholarships for kids that are in high school where they can apply now? Super great question. Thank you, Marisol, for asking. Right now, there are a, a, a lot of important things in the cycle of a student that's in 12th grade. First one is to filling out the application. It, right now, those are open. This is the month, very important to start applying to the universities. And not just one, var various, right? More than one, yep. Yeah, and if UWM is in those various, then it's even better. Number two, the 1st of October is when the FAFSA so application opens up. It's a free uh, financial aid program. It opens October 1st. And then the grants that the universities are offering are also open now for lots of people. So I urge you, uh, we do have a website on our page. I can share it with you guys uh, during our conversation. So you can go directly and see the big old list of all of the different scholarships that are available. And not just what we offer at UWM, but there are thousands and thousands of dollars that are available right now. Not just in our community, but across the country. And, and many times the students don't even know that they exist. So then that, that goes to waste. So this month and next month, when you apply to the university, apply to FAFSA, and then uh, which is your your federal and your state um, funds, and then at least once a month, fill out something for a for a, a scholarship. If you can find, you know. $2,000, $4,000, $5,000, it, it's better than, you know, what you make uh, working 40 hours, right? Also, Alberto, when you guys, 
when somebody fills out an application, they have all the information right there to do the next one and the next one, and it goes a lot faster that way. And that way you have all of your information. And then you can answer all of your questions right there. So Rita says it's so important for our young people to keep learning about our Latino community. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. So, Alberto, I know you have some information that you want to share. Also, what's happening downtown? You guys are offering something this month? Super important. And congratulations to all of the Mexicans, Mexican Independence Day that's celebrated today. Congratulations to all my Mexican brothers and sisters. And Hispanic Heritage Month, you know, we're celebrating for all kinds of, all different countries, uh, all the different countries across Latino America. We never stop celebrating this at UWM and we share it with the community. So we're gonna have a few events. Uh, starting, well, they've already started this week. Tomorrow, we're, oh, okay, Friday, we're going to have a discussion with Felipe Rodriguez. He was the director for 17 years here at the center. Tony Baez, el doctor, the doctor Tony Baez, he was also a fundamental part of, of this center for many years. So we're going to have, um, a lot of events this month that have uh, uh, the flavor, the theme of 50 years. So we're going to be bringing in some special guests um, that are part of our history it's over these last 50 years. And then we're also going to have uh, coffee and poetry. We're also going to have a Latino Heritage Month Award. And then another event that's called We Are Latinas, where we'll have Eloisa Gomez and Teresa uh, Arenas, where they'll be reading books about the history of women activists in our community. So it's super important. These, these people are so important that we share what our women have done. We're also going to have an event at the Planetarium of the University talking about Chile the music and the stars of Chile. And then finally, we're going to finish up everything at the end of the month with a big old celebration for the 50 years of the center. So then we're going to invite the community so they can come and represent. And then of course we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're going to be offering uh, updates and details and videos from the dances uh, to be able to give like a virtual touch uh, with music and art. We're going to share recipes. Uh, I'll even be sharing some. I took the uh, challenge. I'm making some uh, rice with gandules. <laughs> we're going to be sharing music. Uh, we're going to have dance demonstrations. And, you know, we had to change things up a little bit, adjust things a little bit because of this virtual way of doing things, but we're going to keep um, keep moving forward, right? That's the only way we know how to do it. Now, I'm going to ask somebody in the comments to find the link for the Roberto Hernandez Center so that they, the participants and listeners have it right there. And if they can also add in the link for FAFSA, F-A-F-S-A So that way the, the folks can help just easier and quicker find that information. So please, Maria, if you can find that. Yep, about the, the grants. Yep, um, in the private chat, I can share that with you guys too. At the center, we also have an emergency grant that we offer to more than 20 students annually. It's designed um, completely just to support students so that they can stay in the school and they can graduate. 
So we do have grants from the center. There's another one that's called My Future. Um, over 100,000 for new people that are entering in the university. So there are so many resources uh, just to support students. Are there still funds for those students that don't have documentation? Are there still funds for that? The emergency grants are open for all of our students. It, it depend. It doesn't depend on their immigration status. We've never denied a student because of their immigration status. I want to mention that because sometimes we think that they can't or they're not um, eligible. We're also helping those students that are. Uh, we're also helping students to be able to come in and just to reduce the cost. Uh, that's a program that we started a few years ago for our community. Uh, if you're um, a DACA student, if you're undocumented, if you can't receive certain kinds of resources, uh, just communicate with us. Uh, one way or another, we'll be able to help you guys. Just feel at home in the center because it is another home. You don't have to ask Alberto if there's bilingual services. Obviously, there are. Also, there are not any costs for these services. And then we're going to put all of the information in there again, where you can communicate with the center and Alberto. So let's see who is with us before we say goodbye. If you have any questions, put them in there. Deanna says, better late than never. Hello. Oh, somebody that's having a hard time hearing. Let's see. Any other? Now, you know, you we're here. We are a, a source of support for you guys, the students. Don't hesitate to reach out to us. You got to just come to our Facebook page, come to our website, see everything that's happening. Especially during the Hispanic Heritage Month. And thank you so much, Tammy. Hold on, they're not gonna let you go yet. Mm -mm. Mayra says hello, but Miranda has a question. Are there uh, uh, recourses, resources for adult students that want to go back to the university. I would say that's one of the numbers that's growing lately. And we open the doors to, to all of the students. Maybe you didn't start your university, you know, right after high school. But it's never too late. So you are invited. Just communicate with us. We can make an appointment. We can talk about the process. And that doesn't change anything. It's just, you know, getting the right information. Um, it's the same process of applying. Um, see what uh, academic program that you want to do. And then the rest is just making a plan. And we'll help you figure out your plan and to make sure that you have everything that you need. What is it that you want to do? Talking about help, yeah, there are scholarships for adult for adult students. If you want to transfer, like from MATC or Gateway or another college, a community college, um, we do have help for those students. There is help for um, you know single parents that want to come back. There is a program for that to help them economically, especially for those people that are in a situation where they need a little bit of extra help. So resources, there's no excuse to not start school. And nobody, there's people that speak your, 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 your language. You can come and talk to us. 
So Alberto, you can still register for, for the fall? No, this semester already started, but you can always um, start in, in the spring, at the end of January. So the application is open for spring and next fall. It's super easy to apply. Just go to the link on uh, uwm.edu. You'll see our admissions page. And then apply.wisconsin.edu. Apply.wisconsin.edu. That's where you'll find the general application. So take advantage of it. You have Alberto's personal service because sometimes the process is, you know, difficult. I know there's a lot of paperwork that goes along with it. I know that you guys need, oh, looks like we've got a message. We do need people to, we do need for people to fill out the census. Is there something that you have to say, something that you want to share about the importance? Yeah, of course, the importance of the census is so important. It's so much more than what we think, and it's, it's resources, it's economics, it's our communities. Uh, you know, Southside, any other part of the community, helping our people. These funds that are, are assigned every 10 years depend on the census. So do not wait. Uh, don't let your immigration status, no. This is confidential and it's going to help not just for you guys as adults, but also for your kids. Lots of programs for schools like Head Start um, and other resources in our community depend on the information from the census. So it, it was just like voting. We're coming up on the most important elections that I've ever seen. It's so important for you guys to vote, to participate, to tell your families, uh, complete the census, and get out to vote. We appreciate you, your presence, all your information. Come back another day. We're going to have another forum um, dedicated to the anniversary of the center. So you'll have to come back. We'll have to find a day this month for you to come back see who we can invite um, because it's so much work keeping that center up and I want everybody to know the greatness of it. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. All right, folks, let's keep going with the forum with an update. Let's see. Hello, Dr. Amayo from the 16th Street Clinic. We wanted to do a quick video to remind the community that the clinic is offering COVID-19 testing. Recently, we've had some questions um, and some people have asked about how they can get the test. So we wanted to remind you guys that the test is available the same day, a lot of times, the same day that you call. The only thing you have to do is call 414-672-1353. Like, as a doctor, one of the things that I'm seeing that's worrying me is that we do have some patients that have symptoms of COVID-19, and they call us, and they ask us um, about the test. But they want to wait days. And so we want to make it 
clear. If you have a symptom, if you are worried about having COVID-19, don't wait. Call the clinic, make an appointment for the test. And while you're waiting for your test, act as if it was positive, as if your test was positive. This virus is, is running through the neighborhoods, through work centers. So if you have a symptom, come in for your test as soon as you can and stay home. Remember, the symptoms include fever, cough, short of breath, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, rashes, and a really common symptom is that we can't smell. And then you don't taste things. So any of those symptoms, please call immediately and stay home until you can get your test. We do have people that have kept working um, and it's very dangerous. There are people that are still taking care of their family and they're not staying home. And that is also super dangerous because it can spread the virus. So please, if you have symptoms, Call us and act as if you had a positive result until you hear otherwise. We are seeing uh, the number of people coming out positive in our area very high. The virus is still expanding throughout our community. And it's so important that we follow all these guidelines and that we're following the social distancing rules, especially if you have symptoms. Thank you for your attention and have a good day. Well, thank you, doctor, for all that information from the 16th Street Community Health Center, and where he is available for people with all of their medical needs. So now I'm going to invite our civic program coordinator. And let's see what Gabe's got to say. Hello, how are you, Tammy? Good, I'm so glad to have you back. I'm sure these people are tired to see my face. No, 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 no. Well, today, I've got good news for you guys. And so, but before I do that, I want to bring on Maria so she can give us an update about the census. Hello, Maria. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. How are you? How are you feeling? I'm good here. Trying to help people with the census. As always. Yes. So tell us what's new about the census. Any updates or what can you tell us? No, we really don't have anything new. We're still in the same thing. Uh, trying to get as many in as we can before the end of the month. We're out at the stores. We're going to keep working until next week, just till next week, because then we have to turn in all of our equipment. So we're still around this week if you need help and next week. So next Friday will be your last day. Let me, I'll, let me check really quick my calendar. It's the Saturday. Mm. It depends. Once you get your 40 hours, um, you know, out here outside the stores and other public areas, it could be 40, it could be Friday or it could be Saturday that we get our 40 hours. It depends. So you have a, a full week to get it in. Yes, a whole week. And we're still outside the three uh, locations of El Rey. We are trying to do everything that we can to help people that haven't or don't want to fill it out. We're here trying so that they can get it all filled out. And have you been able to get people to complete it? Uh, do you have numbers that you can share with us? Well, me, we, sometimes I'm alone. Sometimes I come with a, a, a partner. Uh, we're filling out an average of about 15 a day this week. Uh, last week, it was like 10. Uh, yesterday, we only got two. So today, we've only gotten one. So we're hoping more people come out. 
Um, you know, I know people are working, but we're here. We're waiting, you know, to help every way that we can. There are some people that say, you know, I was working and they left me the paper and I wasn't able to read it. So we want people to know that it's not too late, that you can still do it all the way up until the 30th of September. And for the meantime, we're going to hope that it's extended. But right now, it's just until September 30th, right? Yeah, that's the last day. Well, thank you so much. We love hearing from you with your updates. Thank you for your updates every week. Thank you, guys. Hope you guys are doing well. Happy Independence Day. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Bye-bye. Awesome. You guys heard it. It's not too late. You can still complete the census. We're always sharing the link with you guys where you can go and finish it out online or finish filling it out online. There's also a telephone number where you can call or you can just do it through regular old mail. Good news that I wanted to share with you guys is about the census. In July, Trump tried to exclude um, immigrants from the, the population count in the U.S., but Thank goodness the court made a decision and that is not going to happen. According to the Trump, according to the court, Trump does not have the authority to say what populations are excluded from the count and that you still will be counted to figure out the distribution of federal funds and the seats in Congress. So that's a little piece of good news uh, during all this craziness that we've been going through these past few months. Very good news. Another piece of good news, another decision for the Supreme Court of Wisconsin, a decision came out that determined the beginning of the um, voting by mail. So they decided that the candidate of the third party, the Green Party, does not have going to be on the ballot in November. So we do not have to go back and reprint all of those ballots that were already printed. And that then won't put us behind uh, when you guys receive your uh, absentee ballots. So they're going to start sending them out this week for the people that had already requested them. So it's time. If you haven't asked for them yet, Got to do it now because the time is running out. They're going to start sending them out. We don't want you guys to risk them not coming in time. Also, I wanted to share with you guys, a few months ago, I started sharing with you guys a map. Uh, the map that would show us the percent of people that had completed the census on the south side of Milwaukee. We started with 11 areas uh, that were trying to hit 40% of completion. Us, as an organization, we have been doing a big movement to communicate with the people. Um, thank goodness to our um, efforts and the efforts of the census office, there are only six areas that have less than 40% completion. We have called, we've sent texts to more than 25,000 people on the south side. And we're going to keep calling and sending messages so that there will be no areas that have less than 40%. But we wanted to celebrate this little victory with you guys. And as you can see in the image, these are the zones that still have less than 40% of completion. So the areas are between, the areas that are orange have less than 40% uh, people that have completed the census. So if you know anybody that live in these areas, please contact them, remind them that they need to complete the census so that 
we can get all of the support and funds that we need. That's all I have for now. Thank you for listening. And let's see what Tammy has for the rest of the program. Good news. Thank you so much, Gabby, for the information and for letting us know what's happening. Now I want to invite again Pedro Hernandez, Aboga, uh, sorry, Pedro Hernandez, lawyer with Legal Aid Society, who's going to talk about a little bit about um, what's happening legally. Hello, Pedro. How are you? I'm tired, but I'm here. <laughs> you know it. So thank you for being with us again, Pedro. Have you heard any more information, anything you want to clarify, what's happening with evictions? Please share with us what you got. Well, first, let's remind people what is the role that you have with the organization, a little bit about the organization, and then information about the evictions. Sure, of course, Tammy. Thank you for having me here again. First, I'm one of the lawyers here and that forms part of the legal team at Legal Aid Society of Milwaukee. We are a nonprofit group that offers legal services and representation free. If you apply, uh, or I'm sorry, if you qualify based on your income. Me, personally, I focus in 53204 on the south side, and I do have a colleague. He used to work at the consulate, the Mexican consulate here in Milwaukee. He is now a lawyer with our office, and he focuses in different parts of the south side as well. So together, we make a pretty much a team that's focused on the south side. We don't discriminate. We invite everybody, um, anybody that needs our service. Um, it doesn't matter about your immigration status. Sometimes there are programs that um, to, to be able to receive the funds you need to be uh, a resident. And, and if you're undocumented or if your legal status or your immigration status isn't what you would like it to be, then you're not approved. We don't have those limitations. We offer legal services in any civil area. And it, it, it's easier to say what we don't do. We do everything, like we don't do criminal. We, families, custody, we don't do that. And we don't do immigration. We don't do immigration cases. So, uh, evictions, contracts, bankruptcy, social security, or problems with the IRS, taxes, we can help you with all that. Very good. Thank you, Pedro. So is there a, well, obviously you guys speak Spanish. You offer services in other languages? Unfortunately, not right now. We do know that there are a lot of Hmong folks and other minorities, other immigrants in the South Side. Right now, we don't have the lawyers or employees that speak different languages other than English and Spanish. Spanish, yeah, I mean, obviously, of course. Is there a cost for your services? Nope. If you qualify, uh, no cost. The only way that you can be represented by us is if you qualify. If you don't qualify, we can, you know, charge you something. But we're always here to be able to refer you to another person lawyer that we know, another organization. Um, we don't want you to be scared um, to be able to look for legal counsel. Oh, Maria in the comments wants information 
We're going to put your information in the comments for those that need to communicate with you. Can you talk to us a little bit about what is happening with evictions? Fourth, on September 4th, the CDC Maybe you guys have already heard about it um, because they are responding to the pandemic, um, you know, to COVID. They, through um, certain powers that the president gave them, they published an order that limits and suspended certain kinds of evictions. Especially immigrations, uh, I'm sorry, especially evictions for those that are because people can't pay their rent. So if the renter, um, you, you basically have to affirm your, your rights. You have to fill out a declaration. Um, we at Legal Aid have our own version based on uh, what's included in the order. And we have it in English, in English and in Spanish. And that way you can present it to the court. So that way the court, they can't turn you down because it's in English and in Spanish. We do know, I mean, we know that there aren't a lot of people that speak Spanish in, in the court mm -hmm. or if there's not an interpreter. Uh, you know, we know a lot of judges don't speak Spanish. We know that. A lot of them don't. There are a few that do, uh, that are bilingual or that are from Hispanic heritage. But luckily, thankfully, to our resources and different organizations, we have the declarations in English and in Spanish. It's very important to know that with this declaration, you're pretty much testifying under uh, under the, the you're you're swearing under with understanding that there could be legal ramifications. You're you're swearing that you qualify that you're being honest with your um, with your income. You need to make less than ninety nine thousand dollars so a lot of us are going to qualify uh for two people it's up to one hundred and ninety eight thousand. if you have received a stimulus check that also qualifies or if for some reason you didn't have to report your income you also need to testify that you tried to look for assistance uh, for your rent like through umos or community advocates to be able to pay your rent uh, even if it's partial, you know, payments. So talk to people, talk to a lawyer. There are different versions of the declarations. Um, we, to be protected, you need to fill out the complete declaration. And before doing that, you should talk to a lawyer so that you know what you're signing. You know, even if it is in Spanish, you think you're signing one thing, and sometimes you can be confused and just one error. So, if you have questions, call Pedro's office downtown. just to at least know what the next step is, to be able to navigate everything that's happening. Thank you so much for being with us again. Um, thank you for helping us understand what's happening. Anything else? I just wanna say again, I, I forgot to mention earlier, this is not a suspension of, of rent. You still, um, can be kicked out for things that don't have to do with paying the rent. So, uh, you know, a violation of the contract, um, criminal activity, 
or a different kind of, you know, breach of contract. So it's important to, to communicate with a lawyer, look for legal help, and, and look at the different um, options available. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you for clarifying. All right. I'm going to ask Marisol to remind us about the survey. Has this forum been informative for you? What part of the forum can we better or change? Let us know by responding to a quick survey that you can find in the comments area. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. Congratulations to our Mexican community for your Independence Day. And we're gonna keep affirming that we are with all of our folks, our, our young people, everybody that's out on the front lines, protesting everything that's happening with the abuse of the power of the police and the problems, the racial problems, the systemic problems that we have in this country. We are with you. Our thoughts are with our folks that have suffered from the pandemic, even, you know, economically, physically, if you've gotten sick, if you've lost a loved one, we are here with you guys and here to help you. Thank you so much. And don't forget about tomorrow. Tomorrow is the last day that you're going to see Dr. Kowalik, the director from public health the public health department in Washington DC stole her. And tomorrow is the last day that we're gonna be able to thank her. And we wish her nothing but the West. Don't miss it. Also information about what's happening with COVID. So thank you guys so much. And I'm gonna leave you with this thank you letter for all of our sponsors. Hello, Sock. How are you? I am Gabby, Civic Engagement Manager, and I am here to thank all of you guys for being with us on another Community Forum Live, and thank you for completing the census. We also thank you guys so much, and we want to give you the thanks to our sponsors. We have Wisconsin Voices Community Development Block Grants. Neo Philanthropy State Infrastructure Fund, Movement Voter Project, Catholic Campaign for Human Development, Zilber Foundation, City of Milwaukee Office of Violence Prevention, Tides Foundation, Employ Milwaukee, and all of the faithful individuals who have given us personal donations. Thank you so much, and we'll see you another day.